Here is your Space News update, and unfortunately, something happened down at Starbase, making it so that we were unable to see the static fire test of Booster 10. Super Heavy Booster 10 definitely got frosty yesterday, but then things were put on hold, so no test was completed. However, this week, we celebrated a successful six-engine static fire of Ship 28. And after this test, SpaceX conducted a payload bay door test. So it's unclear what went wrong with the planned Booster 10 static fire test, but Mary, aka Boca Chica Gal, that lives down at Starbase, found another alert in her mailbox. This one pertains to today, Friday, December 22nd from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., saying that SpaceX will conduct a space test activity. So will we actually see the test today? Well, we have a few hours left to find out. Another update that unfortunately we have no video for, but is worth mentioning, just a few hours ago, SpaceX confirmed the splashdown of Dragon completing SpaceX's 29th cargo resupply mission to the ISS. Now, Dragon was retrieved by SpaceX's recovery team and the critical science aboard the spacecraft was transported via helicopter to NASA Kennedy Space Center and provided to researchers. Speaking of NASA Kennedy Space Center, I will be flying on my zero G flight finally in February. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Don't think that I've forgotten about it. Our flight had to be delayed from October and instead of flying out of Houston, we will now be flying out of Orlando, Florida. So I'm very much looking forward to that and hopefully I can make a good video for you guys. A Starlink update, Starlink is now connecting over 2.3 million people in over 70 countries and in many more markets all around the world. So it is just incredible how many people Starlink is helping. And it's even more incredible that the FCC is denying that award money considering so many people are benefiting from Starlink. Seems a bit strange if you ask me. I'm of course referring to the recent dissent statement put out by FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr after Starlink was now denied almost a billion dollars in award money that they originally won back in 2020. And this is because the FCC deems Starlink not reliable for a standard that they were supposed to meet in 2025. We're not even there yet. And also a standard that Brendan Carr says the FCC made up on the fly. So. We see posts from the Starlink account talking about how many people they're helping. Obviously a much more viable option than fiber in most places. And for some reason, the FCC, to me, is treating them very unfairly. To me, it's sort of obvious to, to everyone what is going on here. I mean, this is a technology that the government's relying on. You know, the, the losers here are going to be, you know, those homes and businesses that are going to stay stuck on the wrong side of the digital divide. And frankly, the taxpayer, again, instead of getting this service for $1,300, Per location is going to cost you know five thousand dollars per location if we go fiber or potentially um, even more than that and again it's the time value it's just gonna take a long time if we do actually make another commitment to serving these communities to get them built out with fiber and i just think you know in generally we need to be reorienting around supporting you know these sort of dynamic american uh innovators to make sure they com compete on the global scale again particularly when you see these sort of cc ccp backed technologies that are also emerging right now. But I'm very excited to get my new Starlink that should be coming any day now. And I definitely am looking forward to seeing how it performs down at Starbase. And I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the Firefly mission. Firefly Aerospace's fourth Firefly Alpha launch vehicle launched the Fly the Lightning mission from the Firefly Slick 2 launch pad at the Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. According to Firefly Aerospace, the Fly the Lightning mission will deploy Lockheed Martin's electronically steered antenna payload integrated on a Terran orbital nebula small satellite bus. Six, five, Four, three, two, one. So a busy day in the world of space. That's just pretty much every day now because there's so much going on in the commercial space industry. It's really hard to keep up with it all. Just a heads up, I will be heading to Portland for Christmas and following that heading to New York City for New Year's Eve. So I will try to continue to keep posting updates. However, if I do have a day or two where I don't have an update, well, it's the holiday season. 
But I will say I have a lot planned for 2024 and I think you guys will really enjoy what I have in store. So thank you so much for supporting the channel. I know that many of you are receiving value from these daily updates and I'm really happy to provide them for you. So if you like these updates, please share them on X. Please tell your friends to follow Ellie in Space. It really helps. And we are on the march to 100,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for all of your support. I think if we all collaborate and band together, we can get there a lot sooner than we think.